Okay, this video looks at the problem that occurs when the waste ink counter reaches its maximum and causes the printer to stop working. I only recently found out that Epson inkjet printers have this counter built in. I'm not quite sure exactly how it counts up to its maximum, but once it reaches its maximum it simply refuses to work uh, anymore. Epson just tell you to go to a service agent that would cost about $50 here in New Zealand uh, minimum charge and you can get uh, well recently uh, a brand new wireless Wi-Fi Canon was with good spec was $49 I mean which would you choose however it is quite possible to fix this yourself for nothing they don't help you do this except in America where they provide a utility that will help um, and those in America and Canada who've got printers with a serial number which is a bona fide uh, North American serial number. In these days of environmental awareness it's uh, very dubious to say the least uh, policy that they have there. Okay, so how do we fix it? Well, first of all, it's shown by these two lights. That's the power on light, which is when it's on is orange, and the paper out one, which is red, flashing alternatively one than the other. Now, I can't actually show you me fixing this. I can just take you through what I did to fix it, because at the time I was fixing it, I wasn't confident enough that I was going to succeed to actually uh, film it as I went along. But hopefully you'll still be able to follow. And although I'm using the example of a C41UX, I think uh, the principles may be pretty similar for uh, many of the Epson inkjet printers, particularly the older ones. First thing I'd recommend is downloading the service manual and in one of the annotations there you should be able to see the link to where you download the service manual, not the user manual, the service manual uh, from there. Then that will explain to you by undoing certain clips how to take off the top part of the cover. Uh, remove the paper, this uh, paper support just pulls out. It has three uh, clips which go into slots at the back. Now I've already unclipped this and I'm doing this one-handed so uh, I may or may not be able to lift this off or just show you it once I've lifted it off. You have to use the paper guide, move the paper guide fully to the end here to be able to lift it off and of course pull out the USB connector and I'm going to pull out the mains one here. Now you do have to unclip the fastenings to that top part as shown in the service manual and then we can turn it around it slips over the automatic sheet feeder to access in here what are the waste ink pads. These absorb waste ink that comes down this little tube from the presumably the print head. That one's all nice and dandy. These were black airs thick with ink and they're now nice and white. Now I imagine you might even be able to get these out um, from this access point. However, the manual uh, tells you to take off this sheet feeder and it certainly makes the job easier. There's three screws to get out. One here. You need a crosshead screwdriver for this, preferably one with a good magnetic uh, effect to it so that it can hold the screws. 
one on the end here and one right down in don't know if you can even see it but uh, once you had the back off you'd be able to sorry the camera's moving around a bit as I'm trying to do this one handed but down there there's there is I think you can just about see it there one screw so those three taken out, this whole sheet feeder slides this way, what would be towards us the way we are at the moment. These ink pads in here can just be gently prized out, they're only held by being a snug fit into this compartment. And the compartment's shaped with these little thin things to help hold them there, but it's really just a snug fit, so just lift them out. Now, it's a good idea to wear uh, protective gloves when doing this. If nothing else, you get ink all over your, your hands, which is, is messy. It may apparently irritate the skin. But certainly wear something that will protect your eyes to stop ink splashing in your eyes. The manual itself has a whole long list of safety um, things from the very sensible through the boring to some which just seem a bit ridiculous it doesn't actually say do not eat may contain nuts but I almost get that impression so take them to a, a place where you can thoroughly wash them out it's, it's water-based ink used in in this printer so you can just wash it out, keep squeezing them with plenty of water, squeeze it out, gradually they'll start to turn uh, white again. You don't need to get them perfectly white. But when you've got, say, most of the ink out, then you want them to dry to being bone dry. Now we had quite a nice day the other day, so I left them outside in the sun for a day. Uh, best part of it. And that got them well dry. Good idea to put them on something like absorbent kitchen towel or or something so that uh, the water that gradually drains out of it which will be probably still a bit inky uh, doesn't get on anything that you don't want ink on. Then pop them back in. There's a tube that goes down here that has to be rested down inside this compartment. It'll show you in the manual and this holds it down and stops it squirting anywhere that it shouldn't squirt. Put the sheet feeder back on, the three screws back in place and the lid back on. Then when it's uh, uh, back together again you need to plug it in via USB to a um, computer. Now I could only get this to work on Windows XP. On Windows 8, even under you know XP compatibility, simply refused to work. So I had to pop around to somebody else's house to use their older computer. But I'm going to show you on the screen here what the menu choices were. They still come up. They won't work on this uh, Windows 8 computer. <sighs> Windows 8. Anyway, um, we can see what the menu options are. Meanwhile, if you turn it on, these two would still be flashing uh, orange, yellow, red, orange, red, orange, red, so on. Okay, so we need this little utility called SSC Service Utility, downloadable, the link's in one of the annotations here. 
So the first thing to do is go to this configuration tab. This is on running after having installed running the SSC service utility. You don't actually have to have the printer installed to, to do this reset, um, but obviously you would to test print it later. And then from this drop down menu, there's loads of different models. So you can see you can use this for a considerable number of, of models. And that's a scrollable um, list there as well. So there's even more than you can see. I have here chosen for this model C4X. That just means all the series starting C40 something. C41, C42 and whether SX or UX or whatever. That will cover all of them. Then you actually click this off screen and it will go into the system system tray. So down here we have it in the system tray. Right mouse button and it will look pretty much the same on XP. And then we go to protection counter and clear counter overflow. I'm not going to do this now just in case I <laughs> mess up something I'd already done. Clear counter overflow. And I'm putting in an annotation, a nice little web page where somebody's gone to some trouble with screenshots uh, showing this. I found that very helpful and that's how I knew what to do. Then go to extras and soft reset. And finally to protection counter and reset protection counter. Now when you choose the reset protection counter, you should get a dialog box which comes up and says, have you replaced the wasting pads? Answer yes, assuming that you've cleaned them and dried them, and then uh, ask you to confirm you want to reset the protection counter, and you reset it to zero. And that's what I did. And then when you turn the printer on, No flashing between the, it goes green rather than orange, no flashing in the, between the yellow and red lights. So there's the Windows printer test page, having reset it, and it should be good to go for some time afterwards, depending on how well the other components last. So, should be fine, well, just make sure you don't drop it from a great height onto your toe and in keeping with the health and safety and uh, should be fine.